In ancient Egypt, people did not live very long. Due to the high risks of infections and diseases, most men and women could consider themselves lucky to reach their 30s since infant and adult mortality rates were too high. For this reason, births were considered a blessing both for the parents and for the whole community. Through their many advances in medicine and science, the Egyptians found ways to improve fertility and improve the chances of successful childbirth, besides implementing some very unpleasant and dubious contraceptive methods. Welcome to History Facts. Today I'm going to tell you what pregnancy was like in ancient Egypt along with the biggest discoveries that the Egyptians made just about 3,500 years ago. So let's get started. The Oldest Pregnancy Test in History One of the most common things the Egyptians used to do was cover mothers with magical amulets to keep them protected during pregnancy. Although we have our doubts about the magical effectiveness of these amulets, the truth is that the presence of these divine accessories provided mothers with a placebo effect that allowed them to feel more secure and less vulnerable during pregnancy which helped the baby to gestate and be born without complications. But behind all this mystical aura, the Egyptians were great appliers of science. Even if they were unaware of it, they were one of the first civilizations to implement one of the oldest and most accurate pregnancy tests in history through a very refined and sophisticated technique, peeing on something. According to an ancient papyrus, the method consisted of women urinating into two bags, one containing wheat and the other barley. The technique not only served to determine if a woman was pregnant, but it even helped to determine the gender of the baby, depending on which grain would sprout first. Now, oh, that's what I call a proper pregnancy test. According to the Egyptians, if the wheat sprouted, the baby would be a girl whereas if the barley grew, the mother was pregnant with a boy. And if neither grew, the test could be considered negative. In 1963, a group of researchers from the U.S. National Institute of Health decided to test this method and found it to be 70% effective. Unfortunately, the team was unable to find a direct relationship between which seed germinated first and the sex of the embryos. It was too good to be true, right? Having babies on the roof or in the garden Another very interesting thing that the Egyptians did was the adoption of the birth pavilion. This structure consisted of a simple shed made of branches and contained tapestries, cushions, beds, and toiletries and was placed in the garden or on the roof of the dwelling. Once the birth pavilion was set up, they would sit completely naked on a birth stool, a seat with a large hole large enough for the baby to pass through. At other times, mothers would use bricks to squat down and welcome their new child into the world. To ensure successful delivery and prevent the baby from crashing to the ground, midwives conducted births with magical and medical methods that allowed them to perform their job properly. While the back and arms held the paturient, the midwives pronounced some incantations and placed them around the mother's belly. Some compresses made with reeds helped accelerate the moment of birth. As soon as the baby came out of its mother's womb, the midwives would grab the newborn in midair and welcome it into the world. That's what I call a quick delivery. In addition to these practices, midwives also facilitated the expulsion of the placenta with showers of warm oil containing crushed pieces of a freshly made pot and attempted to mitigate the pain by supplying intoxicating beverages such as beer. Forget about anesthesia, why not just have a drink? The Egyptians also believed that applying massages with saffron powder dissolved in beer and marble powder dissolved in vinegar were beneficial to mitigate these pains. So it was common for the Egyptians to go through all these rituals before giving birth to their children. The most interesting part about Egyptian childbirth took place at the time when cutting the umbilical cord due to the use of a special knife that was believed to have magical associations. It was inverted from a spiritual alter ego. After that, the umbilical cord was dried in the sun and kept accompanying people even after they died. Talk about living with mom forever. 
As for the placenta, it used to be buried in the house or thrown into the Nile to ensure the child's survival. I don't think I'll ever look at the Nile the same way again. The Best Method to Deal with Stretch Marks if you think Egyptian women don't care about their image, you will be in for a big surprise. Egyptians were not only astute, but they also worshipped beauty and took care of their personal appearance and hygiene with extreme precession to highlight their best features and avoid any possible imperfection. To eliminate stretch marks formed after childbirth, women applied different kinds of ointments on their bellies that allowed them to get rid of them very easily. One of the most popular substances used by the nobility was bayon oil, which provided impressive results without the need to have Rihanna's face printed on its packaging. As for the prevention of cracked nipples and breast abscesses, doctors also used reed-based products mixed with plant fibers and reeds, which shows how advanced Egyptian medicine was for their time. The Strange Contraceptive Methods of the Egyptians Although having a baby was considered a blessing, the risks of pregnancy were undoubtedly staggering. Since mothers were in danger both in pregnancy and during childbirth, the Egyptians developed some temporary contraceptive methods to prevent the growth of their families and avoid exposing themselves to the threat that came with bringing a new life to the world. Some of these methods were so disgusting that we should thank heaven they're no longer used. One of the most common practices to avoid getting pregnant was smearing the labia and vagina with straw, sour milk, and animal excrement, especially from crocodiles, or applying a mixture of honey and sodium carbonate to create an acid barrier that prevented the passage of sperm. It even served to scare away the worst love candidates, which was a big plus. In addition, the Egyptians promoted the ingestion of celery-based drinks and sweet beer as they believed their properties were a good contraceptive remedy. After carrying out these unpleasant practices, the Egyptians found a better way to prevent pregnancies by inserting into the vagina a plug impregnated with a substance composed of acacia, honey, and dates that helped avoid pregnancy for at least three years. Since the acacia gum was fermented, it produced a lactic acid that had a powerful spermicidal effect. The Best Diet of the Ancient World According to historical records, Egyptian babies were the most pampered of all ancient civilizations. While the Greeks sent their children to school from a very young age under the authority of a tutor or pedagogue, the Spartans were raised by their parents until the age of seven and trained to be soldiers who would fight and die for Sparta. The Egyptians had it much easier. Breastfeeding not only began at an early stage, but lasted longer than anywhere else in the world. Sometimes it even lasted up to three years. Since the main concern of mothers was to have the right quantity and quality of milk, doctors advised them to rub their backs with oil cooked with the dorsal fin of a fish to increase the flow of milk. If the milk smelled of aromatic plants or carob flour, the baby would enjoy good nourishment. While if it smelled of fish, well, you can imagine the answer. For the Egyptians, breast milk was considered a healing liquid, so it was used to treat colds, burns, colic, and eye infections, and even increase sexual potency. Thanks to this healthy diet, the children enjoyed a better diet than some of their neighbors, which could explain why it is difficult to find Egyptian children's skeletons with rickets lesions. Unfortunately, rickets was only one of many difficulties children faced in the ancient world. Even if mothers managed to survive the complicated process of pregnancy, the high prevalence of disease and infection meant that both they and their children still had a long road ahead of them. The Egyptians were one of the most advanced civilizations of their time. Thanks to some of their discoveries, we can enjoy some of the best medicinal practices and prevent pregnant women from going through unnecessary dangers today. That's all for now. See you in the next video with another interesting topic.